Welcome to another episode of our Q&A sessions, everybody. Uh, we are Amelia and Ryan, Character Creation Cast. You know this because you're on our feed, so uh, surprise, yeah. it's not a real episode. It's a bonus Get to Know Us episode. Uh, we had one last week, I believe, is going to be the cadence for this. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last Monday of the month, which should be this one, uh, so you got two bonus episodes during weeks when we normally would have taken off in celebration. You lucky ducks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in uh, celebration of series 50, 50 series under our belts from the very beginning over four years ago, um, which is just bizarre to say. But like, thank you for being with us for those who have started with us mm -hmm. way back then. Thank you for everybody that's joining us uh we hope that the first q a session was at least entertaining yeah if, if not informative um yeah, yeah so i have to say like we have a really nice mix of questions from people like we do we have you know we have some like really thoughtful deep role-playing kind of questions and then we definitely have some that are just like fun to answer yeah, so, absolutely so i like it. Uh, i'm looking forward to seeing what we did we we randomized all the questions we had 52 questions in total no 56 questions in total mm -hmm. um we randomized every single one of them um so now we're just going through one by one to kind of see uh what our answers are going to be and and i'm excited to to dive right in so yeah, we're going to we're going to get to all of them eventually. So yes. if you didn't hear yours last time and you don't hear it this time, please know we're doing our best. Y'all asked a lot of questions. Yeah. So. And it turns <laughs> out it, from the pacing last time, uh, uh, we didn't get through as many as we thought we were going to. So this is probably going to be at least a three parter. So, yep. But uh, with all that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and dive right in so that we can we can answer as many as possible. Absolutely. I believe that uh i am evens your odds right so it looks like I you're feel starting like it was the other way around but um you know what sure go for it you All want right. to start yeah you're up okay so uh this one also does not have a name on it what is the most complicated system you've created characters in it's an interesting question um because like, i have two oh, guesses okay so there is um sentinel are not Sentinels, uh, Mar Marvel superheroes. Yeah. I got mixed up because we converted our Marvel superheroes characters to Sentinels Into characters Sentinel Sentinels, yeah. um, and played a game with them. Um, and, and of course, uh, Rifts is up, way up there. Yeah. But those are, those are my obvious answers that are probably not the real answer because like both of them are like, you could just roll on all these random tables and get your character. Right. And that was my thinking is like there was a lot of stuff happening. Yeah. And um, it seemed like there was a lot of stuff that was going to be happening in play. Mm -hmm. But as far as making the characters, it was just like, roll it, write it down, roll it, write it down, roll it, write it down. Yeah. It was tedious, not complicated, unless you're picking your options. Right. And that, unless and then, you decide to make five characters. Yeah. So if you're going to like min max or create like a change lane and mm -hmm. uh cause it, even then it wasn't complicated it was tedious right 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 um so my two answers to this my two non riffs non marvel um, yeah answers are number one shadow run oh yeah shadow run um, that's that's got to be number one for me probably uh, yeah, so Shadowrun, I think, just has a lot going on. It's, you know, it's been a while since we did that one, and it's been a while since I've done it for, like, a personal game. Yeah. Um, but I do remember that both times um, we had either people using a program or I used a program or something um, because it is really complicated. There's just yeah. a lot going on. And even um, with the program, it was complicated. Yes. Yes. That, I mean, that that series, we created characters in pairs. We because did. Because it was, it was, it would have been too much for all of us to have our own characters. Yeah. Well, and I know that I was having technical difficulties. We were in the middle of a lightning storm. Oh, yeah, um, that's right. And I, I also was like sitting in my bed to record because my, I'd thrown out my back. Oh, um, gosh, so I, I remember like, that. 
yeah, it was like only like 50, 50 there. Yep. <laughs> so I remember like, you can tell that I am a lot more responsive in the discussion portion because we recorded it later and I was feeling better. Yep. Um, but I like couldn't hear half of what was happening in the actual <laughs> character creation, uh, which made it even worse. Maybe seemed it even more complicated because yep. of that. Um, the other one I would say potentially is Lancer. Um, Lancer. Oh, interesting. We also used a program for that one yeah. um, because CompCon makes things a million times easier. Yeah. Um, I think it's, again, just a matter of the number of options and number of things to keep track of. It's not really that like mentally it's a lot to kind of figure out mm -hmm. it's just that there are so many moving parts right exactly so I, don't, I don't think in either of them it's that the process is not understandable it's just a lot to yeah to try and figure out yeah i i don't think i had as many problems with lancer um i mean yeah there was a lot of selections and stuff like that but i Kind of felt it was fairly straightforward. It was still complicated. My thing is that we used the program for it, though. Yeah. Like, even when we record, which we is not something that we usually do. Right. Um, we usually don't use any kind of character creation software or anything. Um, right. But this is one that was like very officially. It's like officially. And, it's officially part of the Lancer experience, right? Right. Well, it was. It was started by a fan of the game like in their discord and stuff and they ended up bringing them on right to like fully flesh this out and like paying them to make this program yeah. um, and so it was something that even the designers of the game suggested you use as part of the experience yeah that's which is why true. we why we did it that way this time yeah. i would say um, shadow runs definitely more complicated uh yeah in in the long run just because it's it's not official tools Right, to get it done. Right. And uh, goodness gracious, the math. Uh, Shatter on 5th edition, I think, is what we what we did. Yeah, I, which I'm is not, not super far off from 4th edition. Yeah, and I'm um, not sure what 6th edition's like. Do they have Apparently, it's, Yeah, 6th edition's been out for a bit. 5th edition only came out like a little while. Like, wow. Yeah. I only started playing Shadowrun in like 2014 or 2015, and I played 4th. Right. So they are just really turning just, them out just turning them out <laughs> uh from what i understand each edition adds to the lore but changes mechanics a bit and i don't know even that in and of itself is complicated so right. yeah shadowrun most complicated system we've created characters yeah, for i think that's where we settled <laughs> yeah shadowrun awesome all right so well the next question we got from udon bullets um that uh let's see please each answer separately oh this is my favorite question uh that we had gotten probably if you had to pick uh two of your characters to date from different series who would you pick okay so i had i had follow-up questions about this one uh, -huh. uh because am i picking two characters to date each other or if i had to say like which characters would i date and pick two right um, my initial thought was which two characters would I pick to date, um, for mm -hmm. myself? Okay. Um, but I think this question's open to interpretation. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to go the polycule route and say, which, uh, which two characters would I want, uh, in a polycule? Oh, so they have to be compatible with each other too, then. Yeah, a little bit. Oh my gosh. Okay. I mean, up to you how you want to answer the yeah. question, but... See, now I have to, they, some of these questions, dear listeners, have been really hard. Um, this is a hard question. Because what? we have, well, now at the time we record this one, we have now made 51 series, um, oh. which means more than 50 characters each because some we have made multiple characters. Yeah. So uh, that's a lot of. Honestly, I would probably pick uh, my character from 51. Uh, but well, I cannot, that, we can't cannot talk about that. that. It is not on the table. That is a secret. That is a secret. Um, and well, and then like, who does that? Oh, but it's other, our other characters, not other characters we made in that series. So correct. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. Um, cause I was like, that's complicated too. I know. Right. Oh, spoilers. Um, <laughs> this is hard for me because I think a lot of my characters are just me. Right. And like, I'm terrible. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be in a relationship with me. Uh huh. Um, I'm awful. I mean, so, you could, you could always choose the other interpretation of the question of which two characters do you think should date each other? I mean, I still have to pick two though. I mean, um, that's fair. 
and they are still like me and have to be with each uh-huh. other. I'm not really any better off. Uh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'll let you. Do you have an answer to this? I'll let you. Gosh, I really, I really don't because there's a there's a lot of good characters out there that we've created Mm -hmm. um and i i'm trying to remember like half of them i know uh, because everything's blending together way too much yeah um over these last four years and like i can't remember what i created uh for my own game chimera um even like i remember the world completely but the characters are eluding my brain. Oh my right gosh. Now. I loved that character. I didn't even think about that one. See, like I can't even remember all the games we did. Wait. Um <laughs> actually, okay, so I'm gonna put I'm gonna put my character from that Chimera game. Her brilliance. Okay. Uh, oh, I forget what yeah. her real name was. Her, her brilliance. That's right. Her um, brilliance. Like her demigod superhero. Yep. Uh very full of herself. Um with my character from our masks game. Beatrice, oh, um, my adorable little scientist who is burning from the inside. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like one character that's like very, very aware of her oncoming doom, and then one character that's like, no, I'm actually half god. Oh, that's yeah. a very good because I just really like that dichotomy of like a hundred percent. I am, I am dying too fast, and I can't die. <laughs> like. Right. Um, and I just want to see what would happen. Uh huh. Yeah. Gosh, I those are good. I think that's what I'm gonna pick. Those are good. Um, I think like uh, one of them I would have to pick is probably Mishra. Yeah, I think uh, there was no question that that was gonna masks. be on the list. Uh, because yeah. uh, Mishra's Mishra is uh, um, Mishra is your OC, my like, OC. Yeah, like absolutely. Like, um, I mean, like, as people who have like just like a pile of OCs because that's what we do. Yeah. Like Mishra is your like OCTM. Yeah. The the OG OC. Yeah. The OG OC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't like that. Mm-mm. Uh-uh. Um, and honestly, there's 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 a lot of good potential other answers in there, but I think I'm gonna have to go with gosh. Part part of me, like I don't remember details of half of these things so i don't know if uh, our love and justice would be inappropriate because of age or um was that the one where i made serial themed magical girls was it i think it was i thought that they were based on serials it was i don't have my notebook in front of me i just think it would be Um, really cool the data magical girl is is my oh that's right because you're doing yours as you're yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you're dating them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um Although, um, but you've made so many magical girls. What about your L five R character? L five R character. That's not a which bad. was your like magical girl. That's my that's my musician. Michiru, uh, musician yeah. samurai. Um, that's not a bad. That's not a bad one. Um, thirsty sword lesbians comes to mind too. Yes. Um, yeah. My character from that, uh, which was the the character who's who's lived hundreds of lives. Mm-hmm. And uh, and, and embodies all of them at once. Okay, so Ryan's just going to pick all of his characters that were magical girls. I know, right? Uh, So uh, I'm going to I'm just going to narrow it down. It's going to be Mishra uh uh, and my character from Thirsty Sword Lesbians, who I forget the name of. I didn't write all of this down. I just listened to those episodes recently, too. I know. Who did I make in that one? I don't know. We can come back to it. We'll come back to it. I'll We're figure at it out. Three minutes I, left, so <laughs> I have to. I have to finish the spreadsheet that has all of our character names in it, just for this specific situation. I know. I, I should uh, take notes as I'm re-listening. That's okay. All right. So you got my answer. Um, I would love them both in a polycule because they are both open-minded and amazing. Yeah, that makes there sense. You go. And one of them is a space cat, so you know. Exactly. They have different social norms anyway. <laughs> 100%. Actually, both of them are from space. So. Uh, ca- canonically, uh, Mishra's uh, home planet is very open about um, all forms of sexuality. Okay. Well, there you go. Yep. My turn. You just booked your dream guest for Character Creation Cast. Who is it and what game are you making characters for? 
So this, this one is one, also from Danny. Yes, yeah, so this one's from Danny, but this is very similar to uh, Kevin's question, uh, which we grouped together. Uh, Kevin asked, uh, what celebrity author creator would you most like to drop in as a surprise guest? And what game do you think they would brain or enjoy chatting about? I'm terrible at like all pop culture things. Like this yeah. is a known, a known phenomenon. Um, so like, I don't know. <laughs> um okay so they I mean, like i have like favorite authors and things but like would they talk about role play i have no idea well that's the thing is is we can we can and, like, say what game? yeah they, they want to be here to to talk about role playing what game do you think they would be good to talk about if they enjoyed that sort of thing right so yeah i mean for me um it's Ever since I heard that um, Henry Cavill, uh, if oh, we were yes. ever going to cover Warhammer uh, 40K, mm -hmm. um, from what I understand, uh, Henry Cavill is a major uh, enthusiast of those games. Um, There's also a Witcher RPG, and he is also like a really big Witcher fan, which is why he wanted to play oh. the Witcher. Yeah, so I mean, either, um, and like you can way. tell, like in his acting in that show, that he's just like having the best time. Like he yeah. does not care what anybody else thinks about this show. <laughs> he's like having a great time. So uh -huh. if he wants to come on and discuss Warhammer or The Witcher RPG, call us, Henry Cavill. Absolutely, uh, make some characters with us because my goodness, I think that would be really fun, um, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it'd be really great to just uh, you know nerd out with him about that sort of stuff. And yeah. And I, I I would think from his perspective, nerding out as fans of RPGs and, you know, mm -hmm. not like, oh, it's Henry Cavill. Right, like, like, oh, my gosh, you're so good looking. Like, <laughs> I mean, that stuff is all true. But... Like, I mean, like, not, you're right. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's okay, like not really don't... my type, but like, I, I get it. You yeah. know, I get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get why it's for other people, you uh -huh. know. It's fine. Um, so I can tell him that when he there comes on our show. Dear Henry Cavill, I get why other people are into you. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think that that would be fun to have somebody who's like really, because I think there are a lot of, you know, a lot of times where you're like, okay, I'm really into this author and like their work is sort of in this genre of this game. And like, maybe they can come do that, you know, but like, I, I love the idea of somebody who's just like a really big fan of a game. Oh, hundred percent. And like also famous, but like. We're, we don't care about that part of it. We want to talk to you about Warhammer. Like, Henry, Absolutely. I've seen some of your work. I'm familiar with you. But let's talk Warhammer. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Sub like an interview show where he doesn't have to talk about... Being a celebrity. Any of work stuff. Right. Right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, people don't ask me on shows to talk about, like, paperwork. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> so, like, let's just talk about what you want to talk about. Uh-huh. Ah, oh, I bet he'd love that. I think that would be fun. I would Call love that if I were or Henry's in that agent position. or Henry's people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Henry's people call us because Henry's we don't people. have people. Yep. <laughs> um, so now that took up two lines. So now we're off on our, well, our every other. So do you I want me to ask you, one again? Yeah, because I asked the question that Kevin asked. So oh, that's true. OK, so I think we're I think we're technically good. Yep. Yeah. OK. Uh, what is the hardest part of editing for each of you? This one is also from Kevin. Mm hmm. So um, if the question is, like, what is hardest about editing each of our voices? Um, mine is the fact that, A, I tend to take long pauses between saying things because I, <laughs> I'm doing it as a now I'm like super self-conscious about the fact that I'm doing it <laughs> as I answer this question. Uh, because of my ADHD, I have a tendency to think faster than the words can get to my mouth. Mm -hmm. So I have to like slow down, stop. It's like I have to wait for the words <laughs> to like travel down the train track and like yeah. get from the brain to the mouth. So I have taken to long pauses rather than restarting a sentence or stuttering or something. Mm -hmm. So it's really annoying to me when I edit myself because I, I want to cut that out and like make me sound like I knew what I was saying from the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also am born in 1988 and grew up in the 90s so i say like a lot and i can hear it and it makes me nuts <laughs> that's funny if we're talking about the hardest part of like d 
doing the editing. Also ADHD related. It's so boring. It's just <laughs> tedious. And like there's no quick workarounds or no. like it just it, it takes forever. And like there's yeah. no immediate satisfaction factor in it of like seeing you know numbers go up or things go down or like there's no mm -hmm. you know serotonin <laughs> like yeah. no dopamine hit for me when i'm doing it so it's like very much a slog like i have to get through this. oh yeah plus um, plus and you i just use don't audacity. care about it the way that you do right and, and you use audacity which which as far as i know it still doesn't let you edit as it's played so no. like every every little thing you have to get rid of you have to pause highlight delete Yes. Re replay blah 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 and i don't know if i could edit it like while it's playing like yeah it takes a little getting used to um but yeah that feels like very like assembly line like i'm just imagining like i love lucy where the like thing <laughs> is going too fast and i'm like <laughs> stuffing things into my it's shirt true. and like in my mouth and you know trying to it's funny because when i when i edit i look ahead to see all the little uh ticks and blips and other little things and mouth noises that I can get rid of before it reaches my play marker. Oh, so you're like playing a little game with yourself. Yeah. To yeah, like... yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's really fun. Um, and okay. so the hardest thing, uh, the hardest part of editing for me, uh, finding, finding the time to edit mm -hmm. is, is pretty hard. Um, staying focused uh, I've, I've, especially lately, I've had a lot of issues uh, remaining on task, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm if I can get in the zone, I can pump out uh, two hours of raw audio in an hour and a half. Wow. If I'm in the zone. Right. Um, but goodness gracious, that zone doesn't come often enough. Yeah. So well, uh, hopefully it'll be easier from here, too, because hopefully we we're really working, dear listeners, on staying on task. Yep. Um, and like cutting out the amount of chit chat and like non-related content when we record because our yeah. recordings are, our episodes are getting long, um, but our recording sessions are really long and I can't sit still for that long. Yeah. Um, so it's hopefully that'll get easier as we go forward too. And mm -hmm. we kind of, there'll be like less for you to yeah. mess I th with. I, th I think the hardest thing, uh, for me, uh, actually editing, um, is sometimes when the audio is all cleaned up, there's still some like background hiss at the mm -hmm. end of everybody's sentences. So like they'll be oh. talking and then it'll they'll stop talking and you'll hear just a very faint bit of background noise and you can't that, get that slipped through and you can't mm -hmm. easily get rid of that without degrading the quality of the audio. And I'm like, Which what did no I do wrong cleaning this up? When they Am I missing something? The episode because Ryan's the only one that would hear it. So. I know. <laughs> so there you go and then i have to you know take care of crosstalk and uh i've been more mindful about that lately mm -hmm. about separating out the crosstalk so you don't have as many times as people talking over one another yeah um so that way it's it's more accessible um yeah. and easier for uh all the the readers to uh automatically transcribe it if if you're using that so mm -hmm. that's nice um but just remembering to do everything is kind of a chore as well. Do you right? have a checklist? In my head, mm. I should probably write it down, but it's all become second nature to me that like, okay, I got to clean the audio and then I got to put the audio in the tracks and then I got to edit the for cleanliness and content and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. and then I got to export and then I got to finalize the episode by combining it with everything else. And then I have to like, export it to mp3 and then i gotta add chapters and so on and so forth and it's like oh my goodness yeah it's exhausting just talking about it yeah so like i'm i'm like oh, oh. yeah just listening to you because like i i like ryan took it over in the last what year and a half or so Some, something like that. um because we were doing about 50 50 and then we stopped doing the evolution cast episodes for a while um and so you were doing two and i was doing one uh and then we kind of got to a point where I was like not doing well mm -hmm. um <laughs> and so you took that over uh and I feel like you have a pretty good handle on it yeah right now. I, 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 I mean the other thing it. too is that like we're also at a point where like you are so into 
like this audio production stuff yeah. that like if we went back to me editing it you you all would get like two really clean great episodes and then this <laughs> one like half-hearted like i don't know here's some audio i guess uh-huh. like because i just can't i just and it's, can't. because it's, it's funny boring to me and because right. i just like you talk about it and like people have explained things to me and it's my brain's like okay but i don't it sounds the same to me like it uh-huh. sounds i don't understand what we're doing so like I would probably send you the episode and you would probably fix it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's yeah, it's one of those things cuz like um the my process right now, mm-hmm. I I create the markers in Audition and then I can export those markers to the finalized version of the episode mm-hmm. and then move the markers with the episode with the cold open added and the yeah. call to action and all that. And then I can export that whole list of markers for the show notes and I can export it for the Yeah, no, see and that's no, part of the thing too. It's like we weren't doing that before either cuz like you right. can't do a lot of that in yeah. Audacity. Um cuz now you're using Adobe. Right. And and, yeah. and we're adding we're adding chapters now to our audio so that way uh if you're using like uh Apple Podcasts uh which doesn't auto build chapters based on the show notes mm-hmm. um it will have chapters now. Uh, which was important to me for accessibility purposes because, you know, chapters just really help. That's why we put those things in the show notes so you could get to certain spots if you wanted. Mm -hmm. But, like, from an accessibility standpoint of somebody having to type all of that stuff, it was bad. But now it's easy. (laughs) It was really hard. It was really hard. Oh, it was so gross. Like, Like the manual process was so Right, so it's like, it's super great that this helps somebody who's listening, but let me tell you, it does not help the person that's doing it. Yeah, the old way of us doing it. It's a lot less accessible for me as a person to do. (laughs) Yeah, like it took almost as long. What about me? (laughs) It was really bad. (laughs) Yeah, so Uh, we've gotten better. Uh, I'm so thankful we got better. Ryan has lots of things that he would maybe like do differently about editing and I would maybe just not edit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and that's fine. The because hardest part now, for me was the whole thing. Right. But, but now you're doing a lot of graphic design work uh, yeah. for the podcast, which I am loving what you're putting out. And, mm-hmm. and I could technically do that, but I don't care as much. Yeah. And like, you know. Yeah. I think as we've gone on with the podcast, which is, is not really like what this question's getting at. And you know, mm-hmm. like once again, we're whew, off track. Um, but over the last four years, I think we've gotten better about seeing what each of our strengths are Mm -hmm. and like knowing, you know, like I'm really good at creating those outlines and the plans and making all of that stuff work. Um, and you are good at the like really technical stuff with the editing and making sure all of the techie stuff is, is good. And, you Mm -hmm. know, like, um, you know, Ryan is, is doing all of the like does it work (laughs) kind of things. And I'm like, but does it look nice? Uh (laughs) Um, And, you know, I, I early on, I think I was trying to do more of the, um, you know, like the the logistics kind of stuff too, of like, Mm. you know, finding people and reaching out to people. And, and I feel like I'm kind of in and out on that about like Mm. whether I'm I'm good about that. Cause it depends on like where I am health wise. Right. Um, But yeah, over time we've definitely developed a, a much better, workflow between us um, mm-hmm. and one I think that we're we're both happier with <laughs> oh yeah absolutely. Uh, which is what's important and and what makes doing this sustainable too because I think if you're not enjoying doing it like it's it it is a hobby and so yeah. if we're not having fun we're gonna stop doing it absolutely so yeah, uh, we're, uh, we're getting better t- teamwork makes the dream work that's what I've heard so far so good <laughs> so far so good <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right um, I think I I was even three. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So my next question. Uh, this is uh, from anonymous. Um, what system are you most looking forward to? Oh, I like that this question assumes that there's any kind of method to our madness. <laughs> um, <laughs> like we have things planned out. Like no, we finished recording June yesterday, so we know what's happening for June. Yep. We we have a gap in we don't know what we're doing for July. And right, then, and then we have like four things that we want to do. Uh huh. Um, because unfortunately we record July in June. Yeah. And uh, there are a few things that are Annie's nominees for this year that I'm not comfortable necessarily having designers on the show to talk about their stuff before we've like officially uh put out our list of nominees and yeah. like my hands are off of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll we'll see. 
what we do for what we do for June. Um, yeah. What else do we want to do for? We would like to cover Lumen. Yeah, Lumen's pretty much near the top of my list. Every every single time I've heard of it, uh, heard people talking about it, it, it sounded really fascinating. Yeah, uh, people really love it. It, it feels it does like a lot of things. It does a lot of um, things. Um, it, what is it? Illuminated by Lumen or something like that is yeah, the the PPT yeah. equivalent. Right. Um, um, yeah, it's like the the toolkit system underneath it or whatever. Yep. Um, I know. Like, I think is it Nova is like the associated game. I think with it. So. Um, like the original one that it kind of started with. Yeah. Don't quote me on that because we have obviously <laughs> not interviewed a designer on this one. No, yet. I haven't been um, able to look into it too much because I've been way too busy. But like, um, yeah. I'm really fascinated to hear what it's all about. Yeah, I know that you really want to do Wander Home. Oh, yeah. Wander Home's definitely um, on top of the list, too. Which is, you know, is one that I hear like everybody loves and talks about. Um, yeah. It's not my like genre you know it's like it's one of those like i always say that there are lots of games that i'm like this mm -hmm. is a good game but it's not an amelia game right um and i feel like wander home kind of falls into that category for me it's like i see why it's good for other people yeah. <laughs> like i see why people love it mm -hmm. um it's not like the i don't really like those like cozy games like they're not like, right like they're not messy enough i need more drama <laughs> Give um, me cozy right but that's definitely on the list what was the other one there's the third one. Oh gosh there's too many I don't. I know there's like a. I feel like for sure there was a third one that I was like no. <laughs> um, so I don't know what it was. Yeah, yeah. I think those are the two big ones that are kind of on the list. That yeah, once, quite a bit. Um, once I got, I'm uh, unobligated. <laughs> yeah, I got um, a. I got a copy. I, I backed the Coyote and Crow Kickstarter and got the book. Oh yeah, that's um, also on the Ennies list. Yeah, so we that, can talk about that one also after July. Yeah, that one uh, looks really good. And that book is huge. It's huge and it's the art just, is lovely. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And I, I was very impressed by the book and very impressed by the campaign. And I want to see what that game's all about as well. And um, definitely on my one of my short lists. So goodness. We got I got I have too many that yeah. I want to. Yeah. Uh, so the answer to like, what game are we looking forward to is like, I don't know. Did you make a game? We're probably looking forward to it. Whoever <laughs> asked this question. Um, uh, if, you, if, yeah. if you would have asked me before I heard about Alchemistresses uh, coming uh, next week, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't have said Alchemistresses, but my goodness. Uh, Stop spoiling it, Ryan. You just got to listen, people. OK, yeah. So listen to next month's series and you'll hear Ryan like the happiest he's ever been. <laughs> As I typed out in that tweet, I was like, yes, he was there for the birth of his children, but this might be better. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not going to answer that question or respond to that in an affirmative uh, or no, negative. I, you know, like, I feel pretty comfortable saying that, like, I was around for the birth of my children. And, like, there are lots of things in life that made me happier. But maybe that's because I was the one giving birth. Uh -huh. And, like, that is not necessarily, like, a super, like fun repeatable experience <laughs> you know you're not like oh that sounds like a cool thing i'd love to do again uh-huh and yet for some reason i did so <laughs> uh, well right <laughs> <sighs> cuz once they're in there they have to come out somehow that's very true <laughs> uh this is a i'm i'm ready for this question are you ready uh-huh 100% uh a former guest and good friend of the show and also a good friend of myself as a person john adamus asked What's your favorite sandwich? Favorite sandwich? Oh, goodness. There are so many good sandwiches out there. I have a top two, actually. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so number one, if we're going to like pretend that I'm like, I'm not going to say like fancy, but like competent, right? Mm. Uh, I would say that it is uh, turkey with either cheddar or provolone, depending on my mood. Okay. Uh, bacon. Okay. Lettuce, tomato, sometimes avocado. Okay. Um, sometimes like a pesto. Mm. Either either one, not like pesto and avocado. Either one. Um, but Potbelly has a great one that has like uh, I think they use Noisky's bacon, um, but it's like a pepper bacon. Okay. And turkey. Uh, oh my gosh! So and then like toasted. Oh. Very good. Very I can see good. that being really good. Yeah, so like really like like a turkey bacon, yeah, you can't yeah. go wrong. Uh, if we're just like being straight up honest, uh, I have lots of food aversion, so I have a hard time like finding things that I I want to eat because a mm -hmm. lot of times food varies between either like 
I'm disinterested or I'm straight up grossed out. Um, and one of the few things that I can always, always eat is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It's a staple. It's a staple. It's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a time when I was a kid where I was like not helping out around the house. And my mom mm-hmm. was like, fine, if you won't help me, I'm not doing anything for you. Uh, I was in third grade and I did not know how to cook anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like ate a lot of peanut butter and jelly because mm-hmm. it was like that was like the one thing I knew how to make. And so there was a little while after that where I, I did not want to eat it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as an adult, yeah, like probably once or twice a week I have peanut butter and jelly because yeah. it's one of the few things that my body's like, yes, that. <laughs> Give me that. I, I, I had read that PB&J uh, will on average extend your lifespan by like 11 minutes or something like that. Oh, my gosh. So all of the peanut butter and jelly that I've had over the course of my life, honestly, probably now cancels out the 10 years that I lose for being left handed. Yeah. 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 So so you're 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 on your way. Right. Right. <laughs> so like now I'm back to the average human lifespan. I know. Right. OK. Um. So so I love a good PB and J as well. Um. So for home homemade sandwiches, because mm-hmm. uh, my, my answer would probably be different for sandwiches that I get. Um, I was about to say abroad, um, out, out abroad, of the, uh, abroad being out of, out out of, of your the house. house. Yeah. <laughs> it's 2022 y'all like abroad, uh-huh. Ooh, it's a big wide world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so a sandwich I would make at home would be, um, it, it would be a, uh, the bread of course would probably be, um, like a soft white or a soft wheat sort of bread. Like mm-hmm. not nothing like chunky nothing in super it. Like no, nothing like super whole grain or anything like that, right? Okay. With um, the seeds in it, as my kids say. Yeah, I, I, I don't like the seedy They're like, why bread. does this bread have seeds in it? <laughs> I don't like the seedy bread. It's yeah. it's too much. Yeah. Um, and then I would put uh, some cheese on both sides, and uh, okay. Then, whoa, 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 whoa. Cheese. On this both is sides. Wisconsin. Some yeah. cheese. It depends on what I have, but I would probably prefer like a, either a mild or a medium cheddar. Okay. Um, He's if I'm feeling, cheese, like. I know that it's because I change it up every time, right? Well, that's like I, mean, I that's could fair. put provolone on there. I could put some Havarti on there. I could, okay. uh, if I'm getting desperate, American cheese. Oh, never. Right. If I'm desperate, mm-hmm. um, and then uh, on the inner portions, you have. Uh, Probably some turkey, or some deli turkey. Mm-hmm. Um, but you don't put that on right away. Okay. First, you put the the bread buttered on, on the outsides into mm-hmm. a pan to melt the cheese. I love that you're making all of these hand motions to yes. like display this. And like, uh, it does help me. That's gr- But I'm like watching you and you're yeah. like, okay, the bread. And I'm like, so then see. so then you got the bread toasting in the pan. And then mm-hmm. in the open portion of the pan, you put the turkey. Oh, and okay. then you you fry up the turkey a little bit so it gets oh, nice and warm and and you get a little bit of that buttery grease going in there. Yeah. yeah then you yeah. put the turkey on either side of the melted cheese once the turkey's done. Okay. And then you put bacon in the middle. Okay, so you've made a turkey bacon grilled cheese. Yeah. That's good. It's fantastic. That's good. That's good. I love um we do my family does uh like fancy grilled cheese night. Um which is basically like a it's like an omelet station, but for grilled cheese. Yeah. And so, like, we get a bunch of different cheeses and, like, fillings and stuff like that. And so I love a good, uh, like, bacon, pesto, and pepper jack. Mm. It's really good. Oh, uh, The multi- multi-cheese grilled cheeses are fantastic. Yeah. 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 Oh. Uh, we so, can talk about sandwiches for a really long time. I think we talk about sandwiches more than we've talked about some of these games. I know. <laughs> So, so um, but I also haven't eaten lunch or dinner today. Seriously. So. Uh, thanks, um, John, for making us hungry. Yeah. Wait, John. <laughs> no, but it was an excellent question. It was. It was thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, Daryl oh, asked, what is the, the best random table you've ever rolled on? I, okay. I have an answer for this. Okay. I'd love to hear it. It is the random mutant animal tables. Yep. From Palladium, yep. mm-hmm. um, I believe after the bomb, uh, second edition, mm-hmm. which lets you roll which region your animal type is from, which then explodes into different animal subtype tables. From that region, yeah. It's like North America, 
bovine. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 Um, we definitely use those ones in our our Acaticon yeah. uh panel. That was a great one. Mine my answer is actually also from that Acaticon panel. Um, I really like the uh, corporation name table Inspire. Oh yeah, um, that we ended up with Flame Scourge and Sons. Um, that was a that's a really good one. Uh, and I think those are both ones we've rolled on. Yeah. So I also have been kind of in the back of my mind keeping track of other tables as I yep. read various books, um, putting little little sticky notes on them there's, so there's that a lot I know that they have there. good tables in them. Um, I actually got one book that is entirely, actually two books, I think, for the Annie's this year that are just entirely random tables. Oh, yeah. And I'm, like, so stoked about them. Yeah. So, oh, love a good random table. But, yeah, Yeah. the After the Bomb one is, is, it's fun because it's so specific. Mm -hmm. Um, But, like, it's it's depth and breadth. Like, it's, you know, like, all of the regions and then all of these groups of animals and then the subtypes within the groups and the, you know. (laughs) Uh, like, so, what kind of cow are you? But You're that was a cow, just like, one way to roll on the tables. What kind of cow? I because know. You, there there was two top end tables that one was the what region of animal are you? And then one was like some other type of like classification of mm-hmm. animal groupings. And then each of those exploded out into their own sub tables. It was wild. Wheels within wheels. That's seriously. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many good. I, oh. I love random tables so much. Yeah. So, so, so this was, uh, we got two questions asking about our favorite random tables. So one yes. was from Daryl, one was from Anonymous. Um, but goodness, mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of random tables out there and we love there them. Are. They're great. Um, um, so I think oh. it's your question again. It is. Uh, this one <laughs> is from my former best friend, Jude. <laughs> um, you know what you did. It's uh-huh. this question. Uh, Palladium TMNT when? I think we already answered this question. When? He said, I well, we, want... we did. He, he asked already before what is the best system to uh, make fair. Ninja Turtles in. That's um, fair. Yeah. I mean, I do think that if we cover a Ninja Turtle game, we'll have to have Jude on as a guest. Um, yeah. It, like, it'll sound a lot like Dylan sounded in this last series. <laughs> um, but people seem to be into that. So. I know. It's fine. <laughs> I, like, give the we have the kind want. of listeners that are like, yeah, I'd love to hear your soul die. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> people, yeah. that's that's just what being a fan of the show is all about. That's right. You, you know, know, like you're a real, yeah, <laughs> when you, you want to hear the host just We like to hear inside. the host suffer for their craft. Right. That's because true. that's that that that's means how you know art. I'm a true artist. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Is that I would I would allow Jude on to talk about Ninja Turtles because I am an artiste. Uh-huh. <laughs> exactly. Uh yeah. So the answer when? Um, I don't know when we don't have other stuff to cover. Like when there are better right. things to do, I guess. I honestly because like one of my regrets of Heroes Unlimited is we didn't get to go and do the mutant animal like character class out of there because mm-hmm. like it is so different from the way everything else in heroes unlimited works. Yeah. Like, cause they, they literally took the TMNT rules and just copied and pasted them into heroes unlimited oh, and just said, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was sold when, uh, when John said, uh, if you want to be a race of Pelican people, and I thought, yeah, I'm there. Yeah, I um, mean, you can. And, like, there's some supplements that you, you can be dinosaurs. Um, yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. And uh, the After the Bomb, which is kind of TMNT adjacent, it's like the Palladium's uh, unlicensed mutant animal book. Right, uh, right. It, After TMNT was like, you can't do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, they, they, had the same, they had the same rules for character creation. Uh, with bioe and selecting all this weird stuff, uh, and how human your hands are, or how <laughs> animals. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, it's it's wild. Uh, yeah, maybe some bonus content. Maybe I think we'll... it would. I think it would be yeah. fun. Um, yeah. Uh, we we don't have to do TMNT exactly for bonus content. We could do after the bomb to spare you a little bit, but um, yeah, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. Like just go all in. Yeah. I might as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, because we wouldn't have to do like the full like discussion and, you know, history. Like, like we could just like make characters or something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe someday. Maybe. I would maybe. like it. As a treat. Yeah. Might as well. I'd, I would I would find it hilarious if you're like, that was actually fun. I wouldn't mm. think that would happen because I would probably be like this game. Oh, boy. Yeah. It's palladium at its height palladium. So, yeah, I don't think there's any way that I could find <laughs> it fun. But maybe, uh, you know, maybe if the apocalypse was coming. That's true. Well, we'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next question uh, from Anonymous. Uh, what is your dream piece of merchandise for the show? Hmm. This is an interesting question. I'd really love to have, like, if we're just talking, you know, so, like, I guess there's there's two levels to this here. It's, like, exactly, like, what kind of, like, you know, artistic representation do I want? And then, like, what stuff, right? right? Um, so, like, if we're talking just stuff, I really want enamel pins at some point. Uh, because I love oh, them and yeah. I collect them and they're great. Enamel pins would be phenomenal. Yeah. So someday, someday. Yeah. Um, it's not totally out of the question. Like supply chain stuff right now is at a point where we just couldn't. Right. Um, but it's definitely not out of the question if we can. And and um, honestly, you're you're getting a lot of practice with this like design stuff uh, with all these series promo images that we're working on and, yeah. uh, dear listeners, yeah. there's a lot happening behind the scenes right now that we're really excited about. And yeah, you'll have to uh, keep an eye on our TikTok and Instagram cause that's where I'm doing my best work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm still not, I like, I'm not a graphic designer. Like I'm not, right. I'm a political scientist. Uh, but, but you have a good eye for I'm it. I'm having fun for it. Yeah. I'm having yeah. fun. So. And um, practice makes perfect. So. Yeah, well, yeah makes, so I would love better. I'd love enamel pins. Yes, practice makes progress as my therapist says. Yes, that's that's mm-hmm. the word I was looking for. Yeah. Um what do I want? Our, like we've been talking for a long long time about uh our ghost janks to go. Yeah. Series. Um and I really I really really do want that. Um financially it just like has not been feasible yet. Like no. we we really want to, and it just keeps not working out. Um, yeah. I mean. Keep getting close, and then no. <laughs> I know. So um, someday. 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 Mm-hmm. That's my. And I, the, the hard part with that one is it's so many characters, so it does get it does get expensive. Exactly. Um, depending on who, who does it, and mm. are they asking a fair rate? So really, the answer is, is it's expensive, because we would pay a fair rate. Absolutely. So. <laughs> and then some. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. What about you? Um, yeah, the enamel pins is probably top of my list as well, because I also collect enamel pins. I've got like a whole thing of uh, Sailor Scout enamel pins behind me. Yeah, you've um, got your board behind you. My board's actually like right up here out of the yeah. shot. But okay. um, and it's just fantastic to have all of those. And, and like I love the, the little chibi details that you can get in all of them. And mm-hmm. like I, th- I think that would be really fun to have an enamel pin for our show, if not like a, a, a bunch of them. Of, yeah. of some sort. I don't know how that would work, what that would look like, but, mm-hmm. you know, it would be fun. Yeah. Um, bookmarks, too, I think would be uh, just a fun little thing. Not like the thing that I'm most looking forward to, but like I think it would just be fun to have bookmarks of like our, our new promo art that we're throwing together. Yeah, I think um, that's a thing that like if we ever get back to going to conventions and stuff, I've seen a lot of people do bookmarks instead of business cards. Yeah. Um, and so like we could certainly do that because they're not super expensive to print. Oh, absolutely. Um, so bookmarks are definitely a thing that we could do to like hand out and stuff. Um, yeah, it'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I can't think of much else right now. No, no. I mean like the answer is like, I want art from like all of our characters yeah, and care. stuff. Like I would love to just, if I had all of the money, I would like to pay it all to the artists. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> um, yeah, all of it, I guess. Yeah. That's the answer to that. But also pins. We would love to have But also pins. Yep. (laughs) All right. This one also does not have a name. Uh Um, Oh, wait. No. Did I ask the merchandise question? No, you did. Yeah, I did. Okay. All right. So this question does not have a name. It's in another anonymous one. Uh Uh, How would a necromantic magical person work? Yeah. Yeah. I feel uh, like we maybe slightly answered that in our Cortex series. I think when so. When we, we made uh, evil, magical It was a whole team characters. of necromant- 
necromatic uh magical people. Yeah, yeah. Um because Cam let us be our worst just, selves. Just peak selves uh, right, blended right. together. And I think that was we recorded that at the point where we were like, okay, let's just embrace it. Like we were at uh-huh. that point in the <laughs> in the trajectory of things of like, yeah. I'm gonna stop trying. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I I think it works similarly to any other kind of magical girl. It's just that like necromancy is is seen as this inherently evil thing, and right. so it's really more about like uh, things being morally questionable there, right. right? And like, what are your you know what are your anchors for what is moral or not? Yeah, um, and I, I guess it depends on how you handle it, right? Because, like, you could be, uh, you know, a magical girl necromancer mm-hmm. that raises, you know, other magical girls that have fallen in battle. Right. Right? And now your your team consists of all these fallen magical girls that you're bringing back to, uh, to life, to undeath at that point. And how cool... Would it be like you've got these skeletal magical girls, you got these zombie magical girls, right? But when they transform, they actually transform into what they were in life. Oh. So now you've got like the them you're giving them a second chance at living while they are in their magical selves. Yeah, but what are the implications of that? Of like, do they want to be raised? Do they want to be? Well, that's the you thing. Know? Is, is I also think that like that again assumes that we're like operating in this like, you know, current moral standard kind of a thing. Because I also think about something like, for anybody that has read uh, Gideon the Ninth or Harrow the Ninth, um, it takes place in this world where it was just like, people are necromancers. It's just what they do. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a thing that, like, and there's not a lot of discussion of like, you know, what are are the, you know, social implications of that? Like the religious implications of that is just like, People are necromancers. It's just how it just, works. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think it, it depends a lot on on setting, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Absolutely. If that's, you know, like, do you want to deal with the moral implications of that? Or is your world a world where just, like, skeletons walking around is a thing? And, right. you know, that's just what superheroes do. I, like, that's I can the imagine. kind of magic yeah. that we have. You know? But, yeah. And like my my ideal scenario in this case would be like um, you've got multiple generations, like thousands of years of, you know, magical girl, quote unquote, saviors uh, trying to stop this big evil, but them all failing uh-huh. until one time w- there's only one magical girl in the mix and, and they're a necromancer. And, and she's a necromancer. <gasps> and she brings them all back. The thousands the that have perished battle. for the mm-hmm. final battle. And now you've got this like 3,000 magical girl army against the big bad on the moon or something. Yeah. Like just like epic combat and, and magical well, and girl I think, nonsense. Like, what if like necromancy is powered by friendship? Yeah. Like, these are my friends and I miss them. Yeah. You know, so like, I don't think that those two are um, as much of a dichotomy as as we make them out to be always. Yeah. I think I think you can. I mean, they are. But I think that there are ways to mix them and be like the power of love and friendship is an undying bond. Uh huh. And OK, Ryan, now we're going to write a book about magical girl necromancers. <laughs> um, <laughs> like... Like, you can't kill friendship. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, like, I think that that's how I would want it to work. Honestly, mm-hmm. if, like, if it were, if, if it were, like, you and I had to make this concept work of, like, necromantic magical girls. Yeah. That's, for me, where that link would be. Is oh, that absolutely. friendship and love do not die. Yep. Absolutely. Oh, goodness. I know. All I know. right. Someday. Put, Someday. It on the, put it on the pile. Mm-hmm. I would like you to make some uh, like dark magic playbooks for Chimera, and then we can. Oh, heck yeah! Okay, you can hire me to write them. There you go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. Give, giving myself a job here. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, so this question is from uh, John Adamus. Um, Amelia, I'm looking to start recording in my closet. 
Do you have any recommendations on good things to put on the floor to make it difficult to move around? <laughs> oh, I mean, John, the uh, the opportunities are limitless. Uh-huh. Uh, if you are looking for things to, like, force you personally to, like, not move, uh, find all those storage bins you have in the back of your closet. Uh, pile them up around you and build a little fort. There you go. If you are looking for a way to, like, dissuade yourself from getting up and walking away may i suggest dumping a bucket of legos all over the floor oh no uh so that you cannot get out and take your shoes you off to. right yeah to also take your shoes off leave your shoes outside of the closet uh-huh. get into the closet dump the legos on the floor around you <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i um honestly like ryan will tell you just from like an audio standpoint that like the tighter the space you know the the better it's gonna it's gonna sound like i sounded way better in my closet full of dress-ups than i do in my big mm-hmm. big room because so, of the dress-ups right let's, right let's, not because i was like in a closet but because yeah. the dress-ups were like hanging up around me so like you know do There's it in no, a closet to bounce off of right do it in a closet that actually has clothes in it um and then sit on the floor in there in a small space and yeah, like, honestly, if you can stack up storage bins around you and then, like, put blankets over them or something, like, you probably have, like, as a, as a real answer to this question, a pretty good, pretty good, pretty good recording space. area. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and if it weren't for the fact that I, like, finally have a real computer set up and everything, I would be doing that because I did like recording in a closet and I have a nice big closet here that I could yeah. have stuff hanging up, but I don't want to, like, wield my monitors and everything in there, you know? No. So, uh yeah, but also get some, like, cushions or something to sit on because your butt hurts after a while. You need to be cushy. Yeah. Um, yeah, make sure that there's enough room to, like, move your legs around so they don't fall asleep. Yeah. Don't, like, block yourself in too much. No. Yeah. And then keep those Legos a little distance away. Just right, enough to right. cover up the entrance. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Your question. No, I just read the question. Oh, that's right. It's my question. I answered it. You read it. Okay. Uh, this one is from Kevin. Whose podcast music did you enjoy listening to when mixing it together with yours for an episode? I'm actually going to have you do this one, Ryan, because you usually did our music mixing. And then because I I edited the second two episodes of the series, you usually sent it to me, whatever you'd used already. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think, I think I've only done, I've only been the one to do this. I I think for some of our evolution casts. Oh yeah. You might've done like done some here and there, but a lot of times you're yeah. also really good at, at finding, because usually we use three clips and yeah. so um, finding the other ones and stuff too. So it's mostly mm-hmm. you. I'll let you yeah. answer so, this So one. now I, I've refined it down to uh, two clips uh, and then our music, right? Yeah. It's, it's always two different clips. If the Yeah, when I said three, I was like including ours. Yeah, yeah. so then if the, it used to be like three or four or something ridiculous. Oh, that's and, too much. And and we whittle That's it because, down. Like so many things with our show, they were too much, and we're trying They're to too much. We're trying. We 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 refine and fix where we can. Mm-hmm. Um, if if the guests on the show have a podcast with music that we're able to use, um, I'll I'll use a couple second clip from that, um, and then uh, something else thematic based on what the what the episode was about, the game. Whatever inspires me, right? So if it's Dungeons and Dragons, I literally looked for Dungeons and Dragons uh, in uh, on like filmmusic.io, uh, mm-hmm. which has a lot of like Creative Commons music on there uh, with attribution, which is why we always attribute the artists that we use from there. Yeah. Uh, our network also has a Soundstripe account that we're able to use uh, that if we wanted to, we could grab music from there, but that's a, it's a little harder to find stuff on there as well. But whose podcast music did I enjoy listening to when mixing it together? Um, gosh, I, I really enjoyed uh, system masteries. Um, so that's the one that stands out for me. Like there's, this just yeah. like, like, it's upbeat just a fun, and, like, like upbeat, and I don't know if it's because I've listened to their show so much that I'm like, I, I know it when I hear it. Like, right. But yeah. Yeah. The, it's probably the most, it's probably because we've had them on the most. Right. So that I've used it multiple times. Yeah. Um, and, but it is, it is fun to listen to. It's just it's, peppy. 
it it, it, it kind of goes along with ours because like it's that bit tune sort of like yeah. feel to it and and we've got kind of that going on as well for our theme song so yeah uh, yeah. It kind of it kind of makes sense. I, I will be really embarrassed if we if we get to a podcast that has our the same theme song as us. Yeah, because ours uh, is just a Creative Commons. Yeah, song. So too. somebody yeah. else could be using it, and like if that happens, I don't know because there's two versions of the song. We're using the remixed version, yeah. uh, the Hero remix, and somebody else could be using just Hero. And wow, that would be weird. It would be. Uh, I, I'd be curious. Ooh, if, if anybody is using Hero, well, um, I think by... then we're obligated to do a crossover episode. Yeah, almost. If they use the much. same music, I think that's how it works. I think that's how that works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Oh, this next question. Hmm. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have a name. Again, I'm only getting ones without names. I think. Uh, what game do you wish you hadn't done so you could do it again for the first time? Oh. At first, I was like, which game do you wish you hadn't done? And I was like, well, I don't know. Oh, right. really like kind of a rude question, but we'll see you could do it again for the first time. For the first time. Um, oh, gosh. I kind of, okay, I actually, I might have an answer to this. Okay. Um, I kind of want to say Masks. Not I was, because I didn't absolutely love our Masks series. Yes. But because we were teeny baby podcasters. We were teeny baby podcasters. Um, and we, we kind of got our redo. <laughs> <laughs> this last month with D and D, yeah. Um, but that wasn't one that I like particularly wanted to redo. I I wanted to do it because it's one of those like quintessential. Um, you can't be an RPG podcast and not do D and D at some point. Uh, but like masks, it was it was the first time I'd ever touched a PBTA game too. Yeah. So like I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't you know like I I love the character that I made and I'm really proud of what came out of it considering mm -hmm. the fact that I like did not know what I was doing I as a podcaster or a PBTA player um but yeah I'd love the chance to to try again yeah absolutely uh masks was my like immediate answer as well because I mean I love the the group that we made and I don't it, yeah it, I don't think if, I'd pick different guests yeah it felt just like just do it again <laughs> it, uh, right it felt it felt like um like like one of those lightning in a bottle like sessions right yeah. it's um, and listening it, back on it it's still because i listened to it a couple weeks ago yeah um to make the playlist and like it's still it sounds really good you can tell that i'm kind of like not following along as easily as all yeah. of you are because you were like yes protean city is my favorite podcast and i know who all of you are and i'm excited you're here and i love pbta and i was like what's a playbook <laughs> um so <laughs> like I'm, uh -huh. I'm kind of like listening to myself i'm just like oh buddy but um <laughs> You know, like we're not like lacking the charisma the way we are in those first episodes. Mm -hmm. I think we we are doing a lot better. But yeah, it yeah, I definitely would love the chance to to um, try again. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my more uh, pressing or immediate answer probably though would probably be okay. It, it's it's so hard because like if we didn't do Headspace the way we did it, Dirge wouldn't exist. Right. And uh, like. Starcrossed, I would love to do that again for the first time just because that would bring me so much joy. Mm -hmm. But like, um, goodness, everything we created and everything we talked about in the, that series was just phenomenal. It would be a shame for that to just disappear. From yeah, I feel like those ones like really impacted the way that we do everything else on the yeah. show. It, um, it, it, and I think masks like not to say that it didn't have that impact. And again, it was our first PBTA one for sure. Yeah. Um, but it's just the one that I, I wish I had been... If I knew then what I knew now, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It has to be one of those older I think games, it feels right? like the perfect, that feels like the perfect answer for me is, yeah. is masks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Masks, Star Wars, Headspace. Headspace, simply because knowing what I know now, if it, if, if I was able to do that one again and just go full into the like mixed uh, gray area nonsense that Headspace is supposed to be about. Yeah. Um, I, I would do that. And I, I would I would make 100 percent. I almost character. think, though, that like if we did it again, you would be better for having done it that first time, though. Yes. Um, Because, you know. Yeah. Like what it looked like when you didn't do that. I like mean, it I, still came out great. But yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. So there you go. Answers. Yep. <laughs> oh, boy. On the opposite end. What game do you wish did not exist? This is tough. 
Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. First, it, no, I'm just kidding. I mean, no. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, it's really hard not to say that because. I, that's why uh, like, I said as, it extremely um, sarcastically. Yeah, I mean, right. So it's like it, we we needed to get where we are. Yeah. Right. And I like where we are, but I wish we also weren't there. <laughs> you know, like I, I, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, there's like, some, there's some lessons this from is like the those way games that I that... feel about, you know, like, uh, like all of the struggles in my life is like, I like who I am now yeah. and I'm, I'm glad I'm here and I wouldn't be here without all of the, the rough, bad stuff that I went through, yeah. but also I'd like to not have that bad stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I, I feel like not even about Dungeons and Dragons, but about games in general. I think that like anything is, is there are missteps and you learn from them. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because this is excluding games that are just like explicitly like harmful, right? Um, right? Because I don't feel like engaging with that right now. This is supposed to be a fun thing and I'm not going to like go yeah. on a rant about um, games that are particularly harmful. Mm -hmm. We can just go ahead and assume that that's like the general like actual answer is like if that game hurts people, I want it to not exist. Exactly. Um, but like from a, a fun answer standpoint, um, I would be interested to see what the landscape would look like without D and D being this big behemoth that it is. Uh huh. I think that's my answer. Yeah. No. That's not even that's... so much not existing. Just I would like it to not be as big. It's like if it was all a level playing field, right? Right would be nice right. um yeah i mean that's that's kind of my answer as well uh i mean the problem with this is like you know almost every single game is somebody's palladium or l5r fourth edition right right um like marvel marvel superheroes there's so many people that said wow marvel superheroes i still play my that first game, game. i my love that game, game. and I we're like don't so listen much. to our episode then because <laughs> we don't like it um, it's not that we didn't like it it was it was for its time you know but if we're now think, it was i think we try to do that with everything that we cover even when yeah. we, we as we are not system masters so as a general rule we don't like pick things that were like those are ridiculous right. you know um, we try to showcase stuff that we think is good. Yeah. Um, but even when we do some of those older ones, we do try and say, like, okay, obviously, like, this is not a perfect yeah. system, but I see what came out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and exactly. I, I think that there's, it's really hard to say that there's not some of that with a lot of games. Right. And, and there's probably some games out there that were just, like, money grabs that were like, hey, I've got this IP, let's make an RPG, and they half-hearted it. And yeah. those types of systems are probably safe to say if they didn't exist, I don't think the world would be, you know, too sad, especially if somebody else was like, I can make I have that. a better one. Why okay. didn't you pay me? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think um, if I had a catalog in my head, I if I knew all games and like could yeah. remember them, uh, I'm sure I could be able to come up with one that was like, this does not need to exist. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think, most of I it think is just almost like, every game, unless it's problematic has its place right because i think even even for the person making the game a lot of times the activity of making something mm -hmm. even if this is my this is my art moment right yeah uh sometimes the act of making something is more important than someone else consuming that thing yes um it's it's why like lots of artists have sketchbooks full of sketches because they needed to make that thing right um, not because they needed anybody to see it or needed the world to say it was mm -hmm. great or whatever. You just needed to get that thing out. And yeah. I think um, making games is the same as drawing those sketches or painting or writing or whatever, that it, it isn't always for someone else. Yeah. I mean... So uh, I think I think sometimes even the people that made those games needed them to exist. Yep. And so that's great. Yeah. I guess that I, wasn't the question either. So what do I wish? But... <laughs> <laughs> right to not like I mean, be philosophical about it <laughs> no no it's funny because like i've got like at least two games out there in the world that i, I don't care if people play or not it mm -hmm. was just fun making them and right. like one of them was a hundred percent a thought exercise like can i make a game out of this mm -hmm. that's probably a game would it be fun to play probably I, I hope so. I hope somebody's tried it out. Um, the the one I'm thinking of right now is 52 Memory Pickup, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. where you build a house of cards by yourself and you're telling a story as you build the house of cards. And when it falls, depending on the if there's face up or down, like mm -hmm. memories will go away or stay. And then okay. you build it up again. And then when, when you're done with the deck of cards, then whatever's left over in the house or has been face up or whatever, then you pass that only those memories off to another player and then they read them and experience your character Interesting. through that. So it's like this really weird cerebral, like two player Can I make this as work and go asymmetric, together? like yeah. solo game. And it's like, does that work? Probably. Is it a game? Yeah, of course. But right. Is right. it, you know, it was just like, fun to did make. Did it need to exist? Like, I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, like, it, are you better off for having made it? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I, mm -hmm. I thought it was fun and I enjoyed it. But, you know, if nobody else enjoys it, I don't, I'm not losing sleep over it. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what is your least favorite genre to create characters in and why? Mm. Uh, I'm going to come in with a hot take. Okay. Uh, quote unquote, traditional fantasy. I don't oh. like it. I don't like it. That's interesting. I do not care for it. Okay. Uh, when I play uh, Arium, which is one of, my, one of my favorite games, there is a section in there where you spend time defining not only your like lines and veils and X's and stuff, but specifically ask like things you're just not feeling, yeah. right? Uh, stuff you just like don't really want to do. And I'm like, I don't want to do traditional like European fantasy mm -hmm. uh, and I don't like woodland creatures. Right. Those are my, like, I just well, don't like you, them. There you go. So, mm -hmm. so my answer is, uh, it's probably shocking. Um, uh, mech games. You don't like mech games? I love mech games. Don't get me wrong. Okay. But the character creation in mech games, the character you create is a pilot for the interesting thing. Uh-huh. So the mech creation making the mech, which is not the fun part. Well, uh, the mech is the fun part. And you, usually it's like oh. you select a frame and you select weapons and you select a loadout and you select looks. And that's that's fun in play and and everything like that. But the pilot's usually like, I'm a normal person. And mm -hmm. and maybe I'm the tactician, maybe I'm, you know, whatever. But um so, like, you think what we emphasize in character creation is not the same as what's fun to play. Correct. Is that what you're saying? I think so. I think so. Because okay. um, I'm, like, trying to get a grasp on, like, which part you like, because I don't... I don't... really dis like mecha as a genre. So, I'm like, it. why are we covering these games? <laughs> right. So, I don't dislike it at all. Yeah. Uh, so, don't get me wrong. I, I have loved everything that we've covered. Mm -hmm. um, but it's less interesting than a lot of other genres because the character is not the the character to the genre mm -hmm. is the mech and it feels weird making that pilot because the pilot's just the squishy thing inside the mech i see so would it be better to you if character creation really took into account making both because i feel like when i play like the story is like with the pilot are going to be important too. I would, I because would I feel like to me, like the pilot is also like a, an important part of the genre. And like the mech the is like, right. Not interested. It's like, okay. Like I don't care about cars either. Right. You know, like that's the, where my brain goes. Yep. The pilot has to be probably the more important than the mech to make it interesting. And it also has to like, like oddly enough, the mech genre, it, it has to be, focused on the mech stuff right mech combat or mech encounters and stuff like yeah. that right yeah but like if the game was more pilot based or maybe 50 50 i don't know i'm, so I'm getting like a night is witch's like, sort of feel to it right maybe i'm like, not like i know i i don't know much about that game yeah um i i think that the difference too is like when we think about like mechs were like ooh cool mechs and mech combat in yeah. the shows and all that kind of stuff yes which to me like you're gamifying as tactical combat but that's yeah. not what those shows are about yeah right so you're it's almost like in and maybe that's maybe that's my problem with this is that um we are gamifying the wrong part of that genre right 
Yeah, I want I want mech pilots to fall in love, and uh, you probably want them to betray each other. And, and like fighting inside their mechs is like part of that enemies to lovers thing. It's not yeah. about the mech fight; it's about the people that are fighting. Right. That's why I I, I yeah. really enjoyed when we covered Pyre Waltz, um, yeah. because that's kind of what that game is more about. It's a micro right. game, and it's about the the conflict and and whatnot, and feelings between the two pilots and mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff. But like. When you're doing a team, I want to I want to have that that like that those messy relationships and like I want a lot of downtime in my game. And I I don't want to be constantly going on missions and Mm -hmm. and whatnot. And I I occasionally will want to have the, you know, scene of like, oh, my my best friend slash crushes mech blew up. And now I have to put her into my mech to get her to safety. And now we're in the pilot's compartment like scrunched together as we're escaping you right. know on one foot and that's that's the, that's yeah, great and i don't even mind like the fights and stuff it's like it's i don't think that a lot of those games do a good job of establishing what the story stakes are for those things yes. um so yeah i think our i think our problem there is really just like what what a game has chosen to mechanize mm-hmm. um <laughs> uh, about that genre and it's just like the disconnect not being there from like what you like about the genre to what is in the game Mm -hmm. yours is definitely more complicated answer than mine is like medieval fantasy is boring absolutely i just don't feel like it leaves enough room for me to do whatever i want and that's fine yeah um i think this will probably be our last question yeah all right um this one is from anonymous um uh if you if you wrote this thank you because it uh it Makes me happy uh, when I read this. Uh, I love your podcast. Uh, My younger sibling and I are notorious in our gaming group for coming up with paired characters who work best when they're playing off one another and get a lot of characterization from one another. Usually this gets yes ended into some really zany situations. Um, I omitted examples because it takes up too much space, but one example is essentially remaking a pair of iconic Yu-Gi-Oh! rivals in Deadlands. Incredible. Uh Uh-huh. All for it. How do you feel about building characters at pairs, and is there anyone in particular you especially like building character duos with? I love paired characters. Yes. I love, 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 love them. Um... We don't do it as much on this show because we are doing character creation and nothing else. Yeah. Um, we do occasionally get into that, like what are the relationships and kind of entangling things. Um, mm-hmm. I love doing it in campaigns. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think a few of my last games that like actually lasted a while did have some some paired characters. I um, notoriously, when we were still making Shadow of the Cabal, was fake married um Mm -hmm. real married fake married whatever um to my uh my friend ryan um Mm -hmm. and our ours because the way l5r works as a setting is a lot of times there are arranged marriages yeah and the way the characters worked in that one is that we were married and we were friends and we were fine but we were also both queer and like living this like little polycule life essentially Uh that like my girlfriend and his boyfriend also lived with us and we knew about that and we were fine and we were just like socially married and right. it was great. It was really fun to play out. And I like would love to pick up those characters at some point and yeah. play that out. Cause it was a really fun dynamic. It was yeah, awesome. Absolutely. Um, and, and yeah, I've done like, I've done married with people a couple times. Um, and I know that one's like a little harder for people that you have to have the right, the right group. Um, I play a lot of games with my friend Jude um, and we tend to kind of pair up our characters partly because we we sit down together usually to make them and like bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. And so they're usually, you know, related in some way. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I I like it because I just think it it gives you a lot more hooks and it it really avoids that you all meet in a tavern situation. It's a very quick way out of that. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I love paired characters because it's like the, the ultimate like step to, uh, relationship building. Mm-hmm. Like it's like saying, and we don't have just a relationship. We are intricately connected. Yeah. Um, and that, that's such a fun experience. I, I, I've only, as far as I can recall, um, aside from anything we might've done on the podcast, I've only had the experience once, mm-hmm. um, and it was by accident uh during character creation um 
So, and this is currently ongoing. Um, I'm playing in a Simbarum campaign. Oh, yeah. And um, one of the other characters is um, a, a changeling, and I'm playing a barbarian, and the Simbarum setting is very complicated. There's a lot of, like, you know, political yeah. nonsense between uh, barbarians and the Andrians, I think they're called, and there's, yeah, like, there's like, elves lots of, and like, warring and, factions and, yeah. Yeah, but like, you know, typical like fantasy style changelings are, you know, quote unquote, uh, frowned upon and and all that sort of uh, stuff because they're tricky. They're, they're tricky. They're they're not to be trusted because they could look like anybody, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. Um, my character is totally oblivious to a lot of things mm -hmm. and is like, you know, basically me only like in this. Like, why can't everyone world. just be friends? Exactly. So like the and then, so this, you. <laughs> and then this other character is a changeling um, who it has been mistreated their whole life and is very shy and retreats within themselves all the time. And we linked our characters together. We 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 both independently of one another picked mm -hmm. nightmares as our burden. Oh, and we, I love when links happen that way, too. Yeah. Like when you don't set out to make characters that are like in a relationship, but it's like, oh, your thing goes with my. Thing. Yeah. So so we both have nightmares and we both decided they were shared nightmares. Oh. Like we both have the exact same nightmare and it always ends at the very end where we see the the shadowy outline of the other person. But we don't know who that other person is. Uh -huh. And we're like reaching out to, to grab each other's hands and then the nightmare ends. Oh, that's interesting. So that's even like a totally different kind of link than what I'm talking about is like a social relationship. Link. Yeah. But it's like you have linked stories, but your characters don't know. Yes. This is like a like a so future like the destiny players have sort linked of thing. up, but the characters aren't necessarily. Yeah. Yet. So like, oh, they they like cool. when they first met each other, it was an instant trust between the two. Mm -hmm. So like they trust each other implicitly and they don't know why. And like because it's that like back of the mind like oh i recognize you from somewhere exactly yeah. and and like uh, subliminal that's the word i'm looking for and my character is yeah. oblivious to all, all sorts of things and he just keeps his head in the books and he's trying to figure out how to heal as good as possible um and then and and she's just like into plants and she could speak with plants and and like they've got these two separate lives but like we we keep intersecting and yeah it's, oh, it's that's really oh, good. such a good experience like this that's this really this slow burn romance oh, that we're working on that yes. they both have no clue mm -hmm. about each other's feelings for one another and they probably won't for a long time but they you know if it's gonna happen eventually yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah so i think the answer to that is like uh we feel great about building characters as pairs, yeah. uh, whether it happens accidentally or on purpose, uh, whether those are story links or like relationship links. Um, is there anyone in particular? Yeah, like I said, for me, it's it's probably Jude. He's one of the people that I've played the most games with at this mm -hmm. point, and he is my best friend. We kind of just tend to be sort of like on the same page with what we want in a game, which right. I think works really well. Um, Obviously, like my friend Ryan and I have have played a couple of games together, too. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like have linked up pretty well the couple of times we've done that, too, just because we, again, um, have the same sort of play style, which I think right. is the biggest thing for me in, in picking somebody to do that with is that somebody that, like, wants the same thing out of a game mm -hmm. as you. Um, but, yeah, I. Oh, yeah. so good. So Absolutely. Good. And I, I love that you do that with your sibling. That's such a good, like, a wholesome family activity. Um, <laughs> I think all but one of my siblings plays RPGs. Um, mm -hmm. My sister doesn't, but my my two brothers and my my youngest sibling all do. Um, we don't play together though, <laughs> right? So maybe someday we'll we'll find a way to like make a campaign work or something. Yeah. But um, I love that. Yeah, that's really cool. Well, thank you for that question, uh, anonymous. Uh, yeah, that was such a good, like, thoughtful question. Like, not that the other ones weren't, but that is, I mean. A lot, that what a thoughtful, like yeah. interesting question. I, I I think that's a a very good question to wrap up this session of our mm -hmm. Q and A. Um, we've got quite a few left. Uh, yeah, we're about halfway through. A little more yeah, than halfway. Well, quite quite a bit more than halfway through. We've got um maybe uh, we could maybe do the next one in a in an episode. Yeah, we've got twenty we, more. We might questions. be able to limit this. So uh, we'll see it. 
I still don't have the form off technically. I'm not going to tell anybody that. Uh, so if questions do come in, I'm not going to be worried about it. Yeah, we'll uh, just keep answering them until we're done, and then they'll be for next time. Yeah, but um, I th we're we're done for May. Um, we might be Oop. done. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, we're right on time. Yeah, uh, we, we did are, it. We are done for May. Uh, we will probably push the third Q and A to the end of June. Mm -hmm. uh, just yeah, we don't want to interrupt this next series. It needs to go together. Oh, it has to. Oh, oh I, so I'm really good. bummed that this next series, like, we can't just release all at once. I know. Like, I know that's too much editing and like we did, but like, I just want it out now. Like, why it, is it not oh, out yet? It's so good. It's uh, so good. Maybe uh, there will be a way to get uh, a hold of things earlier. Uh, tune in June, whatever. What is uh, it? June 6th. June 6th. Monday, June 6th uh, will be the first episode. We have a very special announcement. Uh, that we will save for that. So this is your teaser to to, to tune in in June. Yeah, I was about to teaser say that to June tune in to June. <laughs> to tune Ooh. in in June. Yeah, tune um, in June. <laughs> uh, and I'm I'm really excited for uh, what we have going on, and I I hope you yeah, will be thank too. Thank you for four years, honestly. Like I 100%. thank you for four years. Um, we're really excited for what we have coming up. Um, in the next year, four years that foreseeable future foreseeable future yeah. uh, however long i live between being left-handed and eating peanut butter and jelly <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a fine balance somewhere we're in yeah whatever that range is between peanut butter and jelly and being left-handed that's uh -huh. how long we'll keep putting out podcasts <laughs> absolutely all right thanks for joining us everyone we'll see you next time yep we'll see you next week Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. <laughs> Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role-playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders, Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker, Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond, Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure, and Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not.